The goal of today is to help you guys to use Facebook, to leverage Facebook, to, um, you know, get your business really aggressively out there. And there's Facebook is absolutely one of my most favorite tools. I'm super passionate about it, um, both from an organic perspective and from a paid perspective, because as a digital marketing uh, agency, uh, we see how we can help companies scale to generate leads, generate sales, um, both from an organic um, strategy and through a paid strategy. Okay, so before we really get into the guts of things, I just wanna let everybody know that Facebook, due to the coronavirus, is now offering small businesses a Facebook grant, okay? They're calling it the Facebook Ads Grant, um, but actually you're gonna be able to use this grant for anything from paying your electricity bill to you know, putting it to whatever you wanna do. Um, I suggest if you apply for this grant and you actually get it, use it for Facebook ads, okay? And I think it's up to about $3,000. I'll share this deck with Jacob and you guys can um, check out the link uh, after our event. But um, basically, this link is going to take you to sign up um, to a wait list. Okay, why do you need Facebook ads? Okay, um, let's talk about it. Facebook stats. 60.6% .6 of internet users are using Facebook. Okay, it's, it's actually king. Um, and it's, it's not just king, it's absolutely ruling, okay, on social media platforms. Um, and, and in all demographics, and we're going to talk about how come. Seven, seven out of 10 users um, uh, in the US are on Facebook, okay? So seven, seven out of 10 users on the internet are also on Facebook. Um, that translates into 2.45 million people using Facebook monthly, 80 million small businesses use Facebook, 96% of active users prefer mobile to desktop, uh, in Facebook, and that's gonna be important as we get into our Facebook ads, and crazy, Users are spending 58.5 minutes, almost an hour a day on Facebook every single day, okay? I'm, the last point that I, I'm mentioning here is the cost per click on Facebook ads. I'm mentioning it here because 80 cents for, uh, a, 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 for an engagement is really, really cheap in the scheme of things. Um, compared to other social networks, um, it's actually much cheaper when we look at different ways in which we uh, can leverage Facebook ads, like with Facebook video views, we're gonna get really into the guts of things in a little bit, but I, I'm throwing it in here to show you, it's actually super affordable, okay? The first thing we need to do, you can't even start running a Facebook ad until you've got a Facebook page. And your Facebook page is like a microsite, a mini site within the platform that complements and perhaps highlights glimpses of your brand, okay? So what we need to do in order to make our Facebook page look awesome is to optimize it, okay? And um, the first thing that you need to do is you need to choose the right type of Facebook page. So just bear with me for a second. Um, so you can create, Facebook gives you, takes you to a very simple interface where you can choose whether you're a business or a brand or a community or a public figure. And it basically gets you into a very easy interface where you can get started. You can start naming your page and choosing the category of your Facebook page, okay? This is an example of um, my Facebook page. Let me just close up all my messages. Um, and you can see here I've placed uh, you know, an image which is reflective of my website. And I give you right at the very beginning a unique selling point about my company with a call to action in it, okay? And um, you'll also see if, you, you know, if you're interested, if you go into the about section, that I've actually like taken the opportunity to optimize for SEO. Um, Facebook works like any search engine because in fact it is one. Um, and if you optimize your um, page for the, those keywords that are super important for your business, it will help you get found, simply stated. So you want to make sure that you've got all of the relevant keywords um, in your Facebook page, just like you would your uh, website if you're optimizing it for SEO. Okay, um, so we talked about that interface. If you dug into that interface and you click through, you'd see that actually there's a few types of uh, businesses you can choose from a local business to a public figure, to entertainment, to cause. You have to decide which one is gonna be best for you. Let me go back into present mode. Okay. Um, and now there's a couple of things that you can do to really help you know, make your page pop. Um, so first of all, Choose a page name super carefully. Um, you know, if you're a new brand and you're 
no one knows about you, you might want to say, you know, Sunhouse Marketing uh, Digital Marketing Agency. You might want to add some, you know, um, additional information to the, your page name, okay? Um, you also want to make sure if you're a business that wants reviews, and this is, there's a caveat here, okay? If you want reviews that you have reviews on on your Facebook page. Now, you just have to know something. If somebody puts, a, uh, puts out a negative review on Facebook, um, you can't change it. All you can do is you can get other users to add more and more great reviews onto your page. So buyer beware, you either have reviews going or you have to turn them off and if, you, you know, if you're unfortunately bombarded with negative reviews. And of course, that's not going to happen because you're uh, proud business owners. You're going to make sure your service or your products are awesome. Um, the other thing is uh, your cover image has to look great. I showed you an image, but actually... If you've got video content, you can upload video to your cover image and use that instead, and it uh, looks fantastic. In fact, I'm putting together a video in the next couple of weeks, and I'll be uh, doing just that. Um, you also want to make sure uh, that when you're posting on your page, okay, um, and you're not paying for boosted posts, and I'll get into what a boosted post is later, but I guess you can figure it out. It means that you're going to spend a few ad dollars to get more people to see your, your post. Um, you can tag people. You can, you can, um, it's called status tagging. It's using the at sign, maybe you know what I'm talking about, to um, garner the attention of other people. So let's say I want my post to be seen by, you know, a number of my colleagues. Um, you know, let's say I'm running a, uh, you know, Facebook ads course and I want to, you know, let my fellow marketers or business owners know about my, um, my course. So I'm going to status tag those users right into the into the post. Uh, so that's one way in which you can get organic traffic. Um, and um, also by linking your Facebook account um, within other platforms. For example, you can link uh, to Facebook from YouTube, you can link to Facebook from LinkedIn. There are a bunch of places you can be adding your uh, Facebook uh, page URL. Um, and you wanna make sure it's a Facebook custom URL, Google that later if you don't know what I'm talking about, where you can actually uh, optimize and modify the name of your URL so it's not an ugly uh, grouping of numbers and letters, but it actually um, has meaning. Uh, it could say you know, the name of your company, for example, or have other um, identifiers. Um, the other thing that, um, and Jacob is a king at this, is that your post content should be 80% social and 20% promotional, meaning most of your content should actually be social in nature. It's about giving interesting information out there, sharing what's going on in your business, sharing what's going on in your life, uh, as long as it's going to be of value to your users. Um, and you just want to make sure that your keywords, your content, all your calls to actions are attracting the right types of people. So, for example, um, if I'm a marketer, I want to attract uh, users who are going to be business owners. So I've got to make sure my content is going to be of interest to business owners. Um, if you're trying to sell cosmetics, you need to make sure that your content is going to be of interest to the demographic that you're trying to reach, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so those are the types of things that you need to be doing um, in order to optimize. Now, one of the things you need to know is that even though there's stuff you can do to achieve organic traffic on Facebook, unfortunately, organic is on the demise, and it has been for a couple of years. Um, for example, only one in 50 fans who like your Facebook page, page will actually see your post content um, if you're creating it through only through organic reach, okay, which means non-paid traffic. Um, and one of the reasons for this is because Facebook has what they call their newsfeed algorithm, which determines uh, which of the content that gets served up on Facebook is going to be the most interesting to you through, and they do this through artificial intelligence. Um, and um, so they're busy trying to serve up content that's going to be the most appealing to you, not necessarily what we as business owners want them to see. Okay. That's why Facebook ads are so important. Uh, you know, four or five years ago, you could post organic content and it really would get seen and, and highly, highly engaged, but no longer. And one of the tricks here is never to spam on Facebook. Okay, I mentioned the 80% rule. So 80% really meaningful, good content. So don't spam your users. Make sure you've got good content. And even after everything I've said, you're still going to have to get involved with um, Facebook ads. But I want to show you a really cool tool. We're going to head into Facebook ads right now. But one of the things that we all have to do as marketers is we have to do market research, okay? And we have to find out what are our competitors posting? What types of content are they using? How much are they spending in Facebook ads, right? 
Um, so Facebook um, actually started sharing a tool over a year ago called the Facebook Ads Library. Now they did this not to help marketers like me, they did it in a bid for transparency because Facebook was in a little bit of hot water about uh, not showcasing and sharing information. Um, but by doing so, they created, uh, in essence, one of like my most favorite tools, um, and it's called the Facebook Ads Library tool. Um, and I'm gonna just show it to you, hold on. Okay, so basically you get to this interface, um, and um, you can literally type in any of your competitors uh, in this search field. So we're gonna say we're gonna, our target is my, um, is my uh, competitor. And I can toggle by country. So if there's a target in uh, Mexico and there's a target in Canada and there's a target in the United States, they're all gonna have different types of ads and I may wanna spy on them. In this case, I'm gonna spy on them in the United States. And um, I'm gonna be able to see all of their ad copy on all of their ads. I'm gonna be able to see all of their impressions. And I'm gonna even be able to find out how much um, ad spend they have. Um, because we're sharing screens, I'm having some loading difficulties. Let me see if I can refresh. Um, and if it doesn't come back real fast, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the link to Facebook ads library in my presentation and uh, you can, oh, here we go, great. So here's Target, I uh, hear their ads. Um, and as you can see, um, you can get all sorts of information here. You can find out when the uh, ad started. You can even click on the link to their landing, their correlating landing page, okay? Uh, you can uh, check out the various uh, platforms that uh, they might be on. So for example, if they're um, advertising on Instagram, you can now um, toggle back and forth to see what types of ads they're using on Instagram. Any of the Facebook content networks um, are available here for you to see ad content. So it's really super cool. Um, and it tells you up here, you know, what the total spend by page on ads is, and it's just super helpful. And it's a great way for you to check in on uh, what type of content uh, you need to be doing um, and generating for your own, uh, for your own, um, for your own uh, clients and customers. Okay, so now let's like get into Facebook, Facebook ads. Facebook is super robust and it can seem very complex, but today we're gonna to go through like the basics of Facebook ads. Um, and let's start here. When you when you uh, create your Facebook ads manager account, there's a whole tree. Uh, there's a Facebook business manager account, which allows you to manage multiple um, ads manager accounts. Uh, and from ads manager, you can run multiple campaigns and from campaigns, you can run ad sets and from ad sets, you can run ads. Okay, but here we are at the very beginning and we want to create our first campaign. And Facebook gives us a ton of options. It says you can create a brand awareness campaign, which means basically that you're going to get your post in front of as many people as possible to get the most amount of engagement. You can run a traffic campaign, which means that you're gonna drive users to a particular landing page um, or website, um, and uh, you're gonna try and get the most traffic to that page as possible. Uh, you can do a conversion campaign, which is similar to a traffic campaign, but it's goal focused. We wanna find out by driving those users to that landing page, how many people are gonna sign up to your webinar, how many people are gonna become a lead, how many people are gonna buy product from you. Okay, that's a conversion ad. Uh, then if you have an app, you can run app installs. Um, video views campaigns, they're, they're the, the best because um, they're kind of like an engagement campaign, but if you've got video, you're gonna reach a huge number of users for a very small amount of money. In fact, it's one of the cheapest ways to run a Facebook ad campaign is through a video views ad. Now, um, you know, if I'm uh, looking for new clients, I might wanna run a lead generation ad campaign, which is also a super cool um, ad type, uh, which allows us to actually uh, create an ad, get the user to click on a call to action button. We'll show you what that means in a little bit. Um, and, and, and a lead generation form pops up and you can um, get the user to fill out all of the form fields you need to capture a lead. So as you can see, it's super, super robust. Now, there's a fantastic ad type called Facebook Messenger, um, which basically gets users engaged in a, mess is a, in a Facebook Messenger chat. And I'm gonna show you an example of that later because Messenger ads are probably um, equal in power to video view ads. 
okay? Because people love to message and they prefer messaging over any other type of engagement. Um, and Facebook is clearly aware of that and it's given us amazing ways to reach users. You'll notice interestingly that store traffic is not available right now and that's because of COVID-19. Uh, in their bid to be responsible, um, they're ensuring that uh, people aren't being driven to stores. So interesting. So today we're going to do a very simple traffic campaign. So here we go and I'm going to scroll down and it's going to give me an option to name my campaign. Um, in this case you want to name it something that you'll that will be relevant to you. maybe you're going to try and do a campaign specific to a certain promotion. So you want to name it in an identifiable way because you're going to be monitoring that. Okay, now Facebook is asking you to create an ad set name. So what is an ad set name? We've created the larger campaign, you know, about that larger promotion, but now we want to create mini campaigns where we're A-B testing one against the other to see which is going to perform better. Is, it, is one audience over another audience going to be powerful? Is um, one message over another message going to win? What are going to be the differentiators? So based on how you decide to break up your ad campaign, okay, you want to mention it in your ad set name. So for example, uh, if I'm trying to reach, you know, uh, women who are 45 and older, I might call this women 45. Okay, you need to have differentiators. Okay, and as you'll no notice here in this section, okay, Facebook is giving you a ton of options. You can drive users to a website. You can also drive them to an app. You can drive them to Messenger. I told you about those Messenger ads. Or you can drive them to WhatsApp, okay? Facebook has that ability to reach you on WhatsApp, on, on Instagram. We're going to get into that a little bit below. And um, through an app and through message, through messaging. Okay, we're going to skip down because dynamic creatives and offers are a little bit more complex, so I'm going to ignore them for today. And I want to get into the guts of one of the most exciting features that Facebook has. And that's their ability to target audiences in the most incredible ways. I want to say up front that Facebook is not just a B2C tool. It's not just businesses trying to reach consumers. If you're in the B2B space and you need to reach other business owners, Facebook has incredible audience targeting, okay? Because, and we're going to go through it, but it gives you the ability to target by things like uh, job title. So um, here we are in uh, custom audiences. Um, and I'm just going to scroll down a bit. And it's gonna, oh, it's just being a little buggy. Hold on one sec. Let me do this. Um, okay, I wanna target uh, the United States. So I'm going to uh, add a country. I can, you can notice that I can target by age. Okay, I can change that up. I can target by male or female. I can target by language. And I can get more, this is where it gets really cool. I can get really down and granular, okay? I can browse by a number of different uh, recommendations. So for example, just within demographics, for example, I can target people based on education. Do they have a college education or not? Or do, are they just high school graduates? Uh, are, they, are they about to graduate college? Um, I can target by their financials. Um, I can target by life events. For example, are they single? Are they married? Are they about to get married? I can, I can target by, uh, by the fact that they're a parent or not a parent. If I have baby products to sell, I can get super, super granular. I can say, yes, I want to target parents, but not all parents. I only want to target parents of um, up until the age of 12 months or up in the age, until the age of 18 months. It gets that granular. And the, the uh, demographics go on and on. One of the most important um, one of the most important opportunities in audience targeting is interests, where you literally can target by a, a slew of interests. Um, so you can get, you know, super, super laser focused in your campaigns. Um, furthermore, let me just show you, this is great. You can also target by behaviors. So, um, if they're a mobile device user versus a desktop user, if they're a, an expat, and you can even target if they're a U.S. expat or if they're a Canadian expat. You can get crazy in terms of your targeting. Uh, you can target by behavior, like are they busy online shoppers? Um, what are their? Are, do they like playing games, uh, online games? What types of um, 
payment options do they use? Or do, have they used Facebook payment options in the last 30, 60 days? It goes on and on. So you'll end up spending actually a tremendous amount of time in this area, okay? Because this at the end of the day is probably one of, it possibly um, more important than your content and your call to actions, although they're extremely important. If you're not reaching the right audience, then everything that you've done will have been uh, for nothing. So you really want to spend a lot of time uh, researching this area, but it's very intuitive and easy to use. Once you've done this, you want to save your audience. You can name your audience because you might want to reuse those audiences again and again. In fact, Facebook gives you an area within Ads Manager where you can collect all the audiences that you want to uh, save and so that you can reuse them again. Um, now, um, after you've decided upon the audience you want to use, then you have to um, choose the placement of your ads. Where do you want your ads to be placed? So Facebook recommends what is called automatic placements, okay, where it's going to say, Facebook is going to decide based on AI where they think your ad should be placed across all of their networks. But sometimes that's not good enough. Sometimes you need to be specific in your networks and you want to, you know, for example, that your uh, target audience is anywhere from 18 to 30. And they're really not hanging out on Facebook, but they're really hanging out on Instagram. So you can um, cherry pick which, um, you know, which uh, placements you want. There's something called the audience network. Audience network is for mobile devices. They're mostly in-app audiences. And one of the reasons these are uh, so desired is not only because it gives you an opportunity to reach more users, but also because when you do audience network targeting, it's actually a little bit cheaper than all the other platforms. Instagram being the most expensive, Facebook in the middle, and audience targeting, um, audience network uh, as the cheapest option, okay? And then you can, See, it just goes on and on here, the different types of placements you can have. Um, if you're, this is your first time and you have a broader audience, then do stick with the uh, recommended um, um, automatic placement. Now, the one other thing here, the other caveat I want to show is that um, the recommended uh, devices option is that you target all devices, but if you know that you're uh, targeting mobile apps only, or you know that your demographic really is on mobile, then you can um, even have the option to choose mobile versus desktop, okay? Um, so I'm gonna scroll down, assuming that we've made all of these smart options, uh, those that will be the best option for our, our audiences. Okay, then you get into optimization and spending controls, okay? So you can, um, I would say if you're a beginner to stay focused on link clicks. There are other options here like impressions, daily unique reach and landing page views. But if you're, if you're new at this, stick with link clicks. Um, okay, then uh, you continue. And we patiently wait to load. Um, but while we do that, uh, we'll talk about some, some of the other features that we're about to see. Okay, I mentioned earlier um, that you have to have a Facebook page in order to run Facebook ads. So you can see right here uh, is my, my Facebook page, Sunhouse Marketing, the name of my company. Um, and you can see that I've also hooked up my Instagram account. That's another integration you can have because as I mentioned earlier, you can uh, target users on Instagram and actually Instagram for uh, younger demographics is super, super powerful and highly, highly recommended. Okay, then you're gonna get into it's so much fun, really. If you're a creative person, this is super fun. And even if you're not, by the way, I'll show you uh, some easy hacks to make ads instantly, okay? Um, so you'll see from this interface, it's giving you three options to create what's called a carousel ad, a single image or video ad, or a collection ad. So just to show you what a carousel ad looks like, um, if you scroll down here, and we're just gonna wait for Facebook to, um, load. Um, you can see that you have a plate, you have an opportunity to put in separate up to 10 images or um, videos, okay, in your carousel. Each will have their own unique headline with their own unique call to action button and their own unique link. So when does a carousel ad work well? Let's say again, uh, you're in the, um, you know, the fashion space and you have a clothing line, you want to showcase multiple uh, pieces of clothing. You can do so and you can drive users to each uh, product on your website 
uh, vis-a-vis each of the carousel elements. So that's when uh, carousel works super well. Um, and then a collection ad is actually a super robust ad type that kind of looks a little bit like a mini website. Um, I would say if you're a new user, to stay away from collections for now and focus on single image or video ads. So that's actually what we're gonna choose today. Okay, now I told you there's some uh, easy hacks. Um, so if you don't wanna create a new ad, okay, um, you can use an existing post that you've posted on your Facebook page. So you just click on use existing post. Um, it's telling me that uh, I have to uh, select a post, sorry. Hold on one second. Um, and I'm gonna uh, pick um, this post, why not? Uh, and continue. And now you'll see that a post that I recently uh, posted onto my Facebook page, I can now promote if I choose to um, in my uh, Facebook Ads Manager account, okay? And this was, uh, this was uh, in reference to um, an article that I wrote in uh, the legal space on digital marketing, okay? But actually, I don't really wanna do this. I wanna really create my own ad. So I'm gonna go to create ad instead, okay? And I'll show you how simple it is to do this too, okay? So I've created a single image or ad, and now I'm being asked to add media, okay? Um, so I can click on add media and I can either upload an image or a video. Now, I talked earlier about how powerful a video ad is, okay? For a number of reasons. First of all, most users like to consume video as opposed to text. Um, even images don't convert nearly as well as video. I'd say video converts at a, uh, up to four times uh, as much as any other uh, type of uh, media, okay? Um, so if you've got video, use it. Um, if you don't have video, there are actually some really cheap ways you can create it. There's a great animated tool called Powtoons. You can use Fiverr and work with uh, video production companies for a couple hundred bucks. You could actually create some type of video content for your brand, uh, so I'd suggest it. But even images will work great, and even though I just told you all about the reason why you need to use video, Images also work really well. In some instances and in some verticals, images even outperform video too. But in uh, most cases, video is the, rock, is the rock star. And again, I just want to mention video view ads are the cheapest ad type. Okay, but today I'm going to add an image. So I'm simply going to go to um, my own images that I've uploaded to Facebook in the past, and I'm going to choose one. And we're just going to wait for, for it to load. But while it's loading, uh, you can see um, some, something interesting. Facebook will tell you right away if the image you loaded, let's see, to your Facebook page, isn't gonna be relevant for an ad. It's the wrong size, for example. Okay, I think I mentioned to you that um, I'm gonna be running a Facebook ads course. Um, so I'm gonna choose this uh, image. That's all you need to do. And if you have a video, you just simply upload it from your computer. Um, and then you get into uh, the creation of your ad text. So, <clears throat> You're, you have a couple of sections here. You have your primary text, you have your headline, and you have your description. Now the headline is really, if you can mention in your headline what's important, um, the, you know, in five words or less, um, you know, you're, you're good to go. Um, they say shorter is better with Facebook ads, um, and I tend to agree. So try and find five uh, you know, powerful words to use um, to uh, highlight your, your headline. Um, they do suggest that if um, you can include a number in your headline, like, you know, the 10 most, uh, the 10 top digital marketing tools for 2020 as, you know, your hook, or, you know, the top nine reasons you gotta use Facebook ads in your title, numbers really do help to convert. Also, emotive works. Emotive words help to uh, convert as well. And by emotive, I mean, think, you know, words that are going to create a sense of um, reaction in a person. So unfortunately, even fearful words work well. Negative words are actually positive words, uh, often in headlines. So, you know, uh, you know, the worst the worst uh, Facebook ad mistakes you could find out with a top, you know, find out top five uh, worst Facebook mistakes or whatever. We'd have to play with it, but you could see what I, where I'm trying to go. You want to focus on captivating people with uh, with um, headlines that are going to you know make them react. Um, so that's what we're aiming to do. 
Um, and then uh, what we want to do after that is we want to uh, provide a core text, which is called primary text. This is where we add our unique selling points, um, where we uh, show our <clears throat> what service or products we're offering. You have to be very plain. You know, we can get so busy in being creative that we can forget about like what it is that we're really selling. Often it's good to have some kind of offer involved in your content. Um, you know, like uh, if you're offering that Facebook ads course, you know, maybe you want to offer one of the um, one of the courses for free or you want to uh, give users the ability to download a free white paper or give, you know, even though you're selling, try and give something for free as well. And um, in, in the simplest scenario, giving some kind of great promotion is also great. Um, okay, and then um, you have an option to drive users either to your website or to a landing page, um, or you can uh, drive them to a Facebook event. There's a number of opportunities. You can take them uh, rather than to a landing page. You can do what I mentioned before, which is a Facebook Messenger ad. And in that case, your call to action is going to be instead of learn more uh, or buy now or book now, it could be ch it, it will be uh, it will be message and you would get users into a message campaign. We're not seeing that option right now because we didn't choose messaging, mes Messenger as an ad option. Uh, but you can see right now some of the options that you have. Um, sign up, shop now, etc. cetera. Um, and just to, um, to restate, based on the ad type you choose, you'll get different call to actions and you'll also get different ad option creative types too. Um, okay, and then basically once you've done all that, you get into what is called conversion tracking. Facebook gives us a little present. It gives us what's called a pixel, a Facebook pixel. pixel. This is the one tiny little area where you might want to get a developer to help you if you're not super savvy, although really it's so easy to do. Basically, you create what's called a Facebook pixel, um, and you'll find that by either doing it directly in the interface where it's telling you to set it up, or if you're in Ads Manager, there's a section called pixels and you can go in and create your pixel. Basically what you do is you add this piece of code to your website, okay? And what it does is it tells you that anybody who's visited your website who is also on Facebook, you can now target. So let's say someone, 10 people came to visit uh, one of your product pages, okay? You'll now know when they, you'll now have the ability to remarket to them Okay, um, in an ad, you can create a new audience. We didn't get into that because it's, it's a little bit more complicated, although um, I'll, I'll talk about it if there's time. Um, but it gives you the opportunity to remarket to anybody who's visited your website or any pages on your site. Okay, so you can get very granular in your campaigns. If you know that someone visited, uh, you know, your, um, your page all about, um, you know, women's dresses, then you can, uh, you can create an ad specific to women's dresses. And if they went to the shoe page, you can create an ad all about shoes. Um, so that's how specific you can get. But pixels do a lot more than just uh, helping you to remarket to website visitors, okay? Uh, you can also market to people um, who watch your video content. So you can remarket to video viewers. Uh, you can remarket to anybody who uh, engaged with your content. Um, it goes on and on and on. The Facebook pixel is essential. It will also give you the ability to track whether or not you got a sale, or we call it a conversion, um, through your Facebook ad. Okay, so this is a must-have. Um, and there's... Tons, just go to YouTube, you'll see a ton of videos on how to set up your Facebook pixel, and in the worst case scenario, call your programmer friend and you're good to go. Okay, and then simply, simply stated, you click confirm and you are done. That is how easy uh, Facebook's ad, Facebook ads are to um, set up and create. There's a few other things I just wanted to touch on uh, before we, uh, we finish up. Um, so just bear with me. Okay, I'm just going to present again. I, I told you guys earlier about a special ad type um, called a messenger ad. So I, I just want to show you an example of what it looks like. And I'm happy to share my deck with you after this event um, through Jacob. Okay, um, okay, so 
I showed you how to set up an ad earlier. And here on the left is an example of, of an ad. Uh, we're in this case where it's a telecommunications company in Israel uh, and we're targeting uh, people who are coming to visit Israel. Um, so rather than the call to action button, this is the call to action button of the CTA, um, taking users to a landing page, which is what is traditional. In this case, uh, we're asking them to click on send message. Now, Facebook has an ad type called Messenger Ads, as I said. So in this case, you don't even have to create a landing page. You're, instead, you're creating a conversation, okay, uh, where you can ask for data right in the interface. So if you want to find out what their phone number is, what their email address is, you want to capture their name, and you, maybe you want to capture uh, other, um, other piece of, pieces of information too, you can do this all through the Facebook Messenger ad interface. Now I'm highlighting this ad specifically because it just works so darn well. And as, um, as, uh, as uh, you know, perhaps newbies to Facebook ads, this is an ad type I would strongly suggest you use. Once you know you get comfortable with Facebook Messenger ads um, and you want to go even more uh, granular, there are uh, Facebook uh, Messenger ad apps like ManyChat. It's a tool called ManyChat, which allow you to take the Messenger ad and, and blow, it, blow it way out um, by giving the opportunity for your user to have multiple choices in their ad. So for example, Let's say again, you know, I have this um, online boutique and I sell dresses, shoes, and I also sell um, handbags. Um, so I can ask the user when they, as soon as they get into the chat funnel, what do they want to buy today? Do they want to buy, you know, dresses, handbags, or shoes? They choose the option they want, and based on that conversation, we now give them unique, customized information. But this can be applied over and over again. So you know, if you're a lawyer. Uh, you could ask what types of, uh, you know, law service they're looking for. And based on that, you can give them information that you want. You can even add uh, videos to the chat. You can get users to download white papers within this messenger chat. Um, uh, super cool and super effective. So I just wanted to spend some time uh, showing you how to do that. I also wanted to tell you that I am running a Facebook ads course um, that is launching um, at the end of April. And... Um, Here's the URL to it, and anybody who uh, sees this video um, either today or you know in the next couple of days will get 10% off uh, by going to this URL, which is my website, sunhousemarketing.com slash Facebook hyphen course. And that's it. If anybody has questions, I'd be very happy to, you know, um, I'd be very happy to take them right now. Ah, okay, great. So uh, I'm being asked, how often should one advertise? Okay, so great question. Um, if you're uh, running Facebook ad campaigns, Facebook's AI will know how often to showcase an ad, okay? You have a number of impressions um, in your ad, uh, in your in your ad interface, which you can actually mo uh, you can modify. Uh, if, for example, there are complaints that your ads are being seen too much, but Facebook is super intelligent and it knows how often to serve up your ad. Basically, if your ads are working, you should be running your ads ongoing. That's how often you should be running your ads. Um, you know, they say that until a user actually converts, um, it usually takes four to five touch points. So that might mean that a user is going to see your ad but not touch, you know, not engage with it once, twice, maybe on the third time they're going to read it, maybe they're going to click, but they're not going to do anything more than that. Um, and then uh, it might not be until the fourth or fifth time that they, they actually take action. So you want to be advertising a lot. Um, and sometimes what you do is you create like a lead funnel, it's called, where you have one ad, which is maybe an engagement ad, you know, those video ads that I've just been talking about over and over again. So maybe the first touch point is showcasing a video ad to a lot of people. And then you're allowed to say, uh, hey Facebook, I want to remark it to everybody who watched at least 50% of my video. So then you have a second touch point, and the second touch point might be, uh, you know, uh, a white paper or inviting people to a webinar. Um, and then, um, then the third touch point is, you know, uh, booking a, a consultation to whatever service uh, you provide. Um, so that's how the lead funnel works. Just want to see if there are any other questions. 
Okay, this has been fun. I love talking about Facebook. It's one of my most favorite topics ever. And the reason is because it just works so darn well. I work with companies, uh, global tech companies to small startups and every single one of my clients, both B2B and B2C, take advantage of Facebook ads because they just convert. And I do want to add one other thing. Compared to other social networks, like for example, if we're in the B2B space and we're talking about LinkedIn, Facebook is about a sixth of the price. Um, so it's very, very affordable. Um, you do have to be careful. Obviously, um, you get to choose your ad spend every day. You can choose uh, both a daily spend or uh, what's called um, an all-time spend, um, where you can cap it. Um, so you have total control over your ad spend. Um, um, but you do need to monitor so you don't forget about your ads and spend lots of money un unsuccessfully. Um, okay. That's it. Thanks, Jacob, so, so much for today. It was tons of fun.